I'm gonna show you how to make five different Procreate brushes that are super easy and fun to make even if you're a beginner. I love making Procreate brushes. There are thousands and thousands of Procreate stamps that I've made and I've put them into collections and I sell them in my Etsy shop. So yes, I love making Procreate brushes. The great thing about Procreate is it gives you the ability to make a completely unique tool to make completely unique art. And there's so many types of brushes that you can make. But today I just wanna focus on five different types. I think it gives a really good variety, but either way, it's gonna give you the skills and dip your toe into the creating of Procreate brushes. And I think you're gonna love this one. So let's get started with our first brush. So this first brush I wanna show you how to make is the simplest brush and it is a stamp brush. What I want to make together is just a simple silhouette of a cherry blossom. So in order to sketch it out, I have my monoline brush that is just from the sketching tab. This is a copy of the monoline brush that I created because I like to increase the streamline up to 86% and the stabilization up to 54%. I feel it gives me a lot smoother lines, so I just make a copy of that and make those edits to it. In order to make a Procreate brush, you'll need to use a square canvas, and I've set mine to 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels, and it's just set to 300 dpi, but any square canvas is fine. I find this size yields a pretty smooth edged stamp. If you do it too small, it could be a little bit pixelated and if it's too big, it could be pixelated as well because it would need to be compressed. So this size works pretty well for me. So let's go ahead and draw out our silhouette. It's not in the center of our canvas, so we'll want to center that and also make it fit to canvas. So all you have to do is go to move and transform and tap on fit to canvas and it will automatically center it for you and it of course fits it to canvas. So in order for Procreate to turn this into a stamp brush for us, we will need to have this image white. So all I do is I go to invert and now it's white. You can see there that it's white and then if you turn off the background, you can see that it's white. So I will just copy this layer and now let's make our brush. So what I've done is I've made a new tab just called five fun brushes for the brushes that we're gonna make here. And to create the first one, we'll just tap on this plus sign. Now let's change the settings so it works for a stamp brush. So for the spacing, we're going to set that to max. Then we'll go to taper just to turn this off because that defaults as on. We'll skip down to shape and then we will paste in the shape that we created. So we'll tap on edit and then import and paste. And there's our image that we created. So I'll tap on done. And the other settings here can just be left as default. And then we'll skip down to Apple Pencil because all of those other settings can just be set as defaults. Under Apple Pencil, we want to turn the opacity all the way down to none. And then I'm just gonna change the tilt to zero degrees. I'll go to properties and we do wanna turn on stamp preview, orient to screen. I'm gonna change my preview size to eight. That's a personal preference and that's just how it looks in the brush library. I like to have it set to 8% just so that I can see the whole image. I will set the maximum size to max, minimum size to none, maximum opacity to max, and then minimum opacity to none. And then we'll just skip down to about this brush and name it, and I'll call it Cherry Blossom. And then I can tap on done, and you can enter your name here to show that you created this. But for now, I will just tap on done. So now I'm gonna show you a cute way to use this. So this is an iPhone screen sized canvas, and we're just gonna create a fun phone wallpaper. So for my Patreons, I create a custom wallpaper and icon set, and I share that on my Patreon page. And I'm gonna link that below if you wanna check that out. So I'm gonna show you one of the wallpapers that I made, and it's really simple. I'm just gonna drop in a color. I will add a new layer and grab a white and then take our cherry blossom brush and just put some cute cherry blossoms all over. So this would make a really cute phone screen and you can even turn down the opacity if you want to have it blend in a little bit better, but that would make a really sweet 
foam wallpaper. So now we're back to our square canvas where we can make our next brush, and that is a chain brush. And I love making chain brushes. It's a dynamic brush that kind of flows as you move it across your canvas. I actually have a collection of chain brushes that are available in my Etsy shop, and I'll link that down below too. We're gonna have a lot of links today, so check that out as well if you're interested in that, but I'll show you how to make one. I kind of want to make like a an arrow, so I'm just gonna draw out an arrow, and then I'll show you how to create that into a chain brush. I'm also gonna fit this one to canvas, so I will just tap on that, and now we will invert this one as well, and I will tap on copy, and let's make our chain brush. So back in our five fun brushes tab, I will just tap on the plus sign again. And the first setting we're gonna change is the spacing. And this really will depend on the shape that you have drawn to create into your chain brush. So I'm gonna tentatively set this one to 35% and then see if I need to make any adjustments after I have set the other settings. Under stabilization, we're gonna set the streamline to max. Taper, we're gonna turn down this pressure again and under shape, we will paste in our shape by going to edit, import, and paste. And then for touch properties, we want this rotation to follow stroke. So we'll set that all the way to follow stroke and leave the others as defaults. And then we'll go skip down to Apple Pencil and turn opacity down to none. And then that tilt to 0%. And we're starting to see it and it's not going in the correct direction. So let's go back to the shape and then tap on edit and then let's rotate this and then tap on done. And there, you can see the huge change that that just made. It's starting to look like how we would want a chain brush to look. So let's go back to our settings that we need to change. We're gonna skip down to properties, turn off, orient to screen. I'm gonna set the preview size to 20, but again, that's, that one's a personal preference. For maximum size, I'm gonna set this to 350, and then these other ones can be left as defaults. And let's go to about brush and then change the name to chain brush and tap on done. And now we can see our chain brush is ready to go. I'm just gonna add a new layer and I have black selected and you can see that how that chain brush works. And you can see it's overlapping like that quite a bit, but if you turn it down, turn down the size, you can really watch this and it is kind of mesmerizing. It kind of looks like a chain necklace, but if you don't like how it overlaps, you can always go back in and you can go to the stroke path and change the spacing out a little bit and spread it out. And this is the great part about these. You can customize them however you like, but you know how to make it now and you can make it however you want any shape that you want, and these ones are really fun to make. So this next brush is inspired by a type of marker that I love to illustrate and color with, and that is a Copic marker. And I love Copic markers, and I've always wanted to have a Copic style brush here on Procreate, so we're gonna make one today. This is gonna be a really easy one to make because we're gonna use images from the source library to make the shape and the grain on this. So everything that you need to make this brush is already in Procreate. So let's make that one. We'll just tap on the plus sign and under stroke path, the spacing needs to be set to none. And then stabilization, the streamline, we're gonna set this to 20 and we'll go to taper. And I'm gonna turn off pressure, but we are going to change some of these here. So for the size, we'll set that to max and then opacity, that's not gonna go quite to max. We're gonna set that to 99%. And we are gonna do the same for the touch paper section. And now let's go to shape. And this is the fun part. We get to use the source library in Procreate to create this brush. So we'll tap on edit under import. We'll go to the source library. This is awesome. We just need to find the shape that we want our Copic brush to be. And it is a shape called oval. It's right here. and. I don't want it at this orientation. I am, again, I'm going to rotate it so it is at a vertical orientation. And we'll tap on done. And for the input style, I'm gonna change it to azimuth. And the rotation, we're gonna set that to, not quite to follow stroke, but set to 99%. And under grain, this is another one where we will use the source library for the grain. So the grain behavior is gonna be moving, so we'll leave that as it is, but we'll tap on edit and import and go to source library again. And the one I am looking for is called charcoal vine. 
and it's just right here. And I'll just tap on done. And for the movement, I am going to set that to 20%. And the scale also to 20%. Zoom, I'm gonna set that to 50%. And rotation, I'm gonna set that to not quite all the way. I will set that to 99%. And then depth will be max. And the other settings will just be left as default. And then under rendering, these are important settings in order to get the right look of your brush. And I'm gonna set it to uniformed glaze. You can also set this to light glaze, but it's gonna be a very light brush. So I'm gonna set mine to uniformed glaze. And then we do want the flow set to max. Now let's go to wet mix and I'm gonna turn down the charge to 5% and the pull, I'm gonna set that to 50%. I'm just gonna skip down to dynamics. Under speed, I'm gonna set the size to 90% and the opacity, I'm gonna set that one to max. And then jitter opacity, I'm just gonna change the jitter opacity, I'm gonna set that to 65%. And we'll go to Apple Pencil and I'm gonna set the flow to 15% and the tilt, I'm gonna go all the way down to zero degrees. And then under properties, I'm just gonna turn down the max size a little bit to 50% and the minimum size, I'll set that to 5%. And under the about this brush, we'll change this to Copic and tap on done. And let's test this out. And I'm just gonna change one more setting on this. I'm gonna go back to Apple Pencil and I'm gonna turn the opacity off. I want it to have the same amount of opacity no matter how I am placing my Apple Pencil. So let's test this one out. I'll just grab this purple here. And that is a acting pretty much like how a Copic marker would. So I'm gonna show you a fun way to use these. So this is an illustration I made for my Instagram. Again, I'll link my Instagram down below so you can follow me, please follow me. The Copic markers are great to use for coloring in in real life. And also now this one, we're gonna use it for Procreate. So it's just like using adult coloring pages and using the markers that are perfect for those. You can recreate that with this Copic brush in Procreate. I highly suggest you try it if you love coloring pages. It yields pretty much the same results. So this next brush is going to be a gingham style brush and it's gonna be a grain brush. So something that you could use as a texture on like a background and I'm gonna show you how to make this. It's also going to use the skills of making a seamless pattern and I'll show you how to do that. So first we wanna make just a rectangle in the middle of our canvas. And now let's change the opacity of these lines so that it creates that gingham style. And I am going to turn down this top one a little bit, this vertical one slightly as well. And you can just do this to whatever seems correct, but that is creating an overlap and it's darker in the middle and lighter on the outsides. And that's kind of the look that you want for your gingham. So I'm just gonna flatten those together. And then I want to create a seamless pattern out of this. So I'm gonna to go to move and transform, tap on snapping, turn on magnetics and set distance and velocity all the way to max. Now let's create this into a seamless pattern. So I'm going to duplicate this three more times so I have four versions of it. And I'm gonna move these into the four corners of my canvas. So the first one I'll move up here and you just wanna make sure that you're getting those intersecting lines so you know that it is in the very corner. Now let's flatten that and then do that one more time. So now we have a pretty gingham pattern. So I'm just going to flatten those all together and I will turn down the opacity ever so slightly more now that it's all in one, just to make sure that I get that gingham once I start using the brush that we create. So I will invert this so that it's white and I'll tap on copy. And this one's gonna be really easy to make because we're just going to duplicate an existing brush that's already in your Procreate library and use those settings to make our brush. Under textures, find the grid brush and just duplicate that and then open your duplicated brush and then go to grain and edit and then paste in your gingham that you made. And you can just tap on done. And I'm just gonna turn the brightness down a little bit so that we can see it through a little bit better. And cause you can see that 
it was just a little too bright and scale it down. We'll just scale it down ever so slightly. Set this one to 27% and then tap on done again. And you can see a little bit better. So let's change the name Gingham brush and tap on done. So let's move this brush in the tab of brushes that we're making. So just lift it up by holding it down and then drop it into our little brush tab here. So now I'm gonna show you a sweet way to use this one. So earlier we made a foam background with the cherry blossom brush. So let's turn off the cherry blossoms and create a new layer and make this a gingham style. So I'm just gonna use white and then turn on our gingham brush and turn up the size. Let's just turn it all the way up so we can just do an easy swipe across. And now we've got a really sweet gingham style foam background. If you like that sort of thing, you can do it in any color. Let's try a pink as well. There's a really sweet pink gingham texture and this one's a really sweet brush to make. Okay, so we've got one last brush to make and I wanna show you how to make a snow brush. We're also just gonna duplicate a brush that we already made, and, but first we need to make the image that we're gonna have as our shape. So we need to make a snow texture on our canvas and I want to use a different brush for that. Under the inking tab, there is the dry ink brush and that's the one we're gonna use. And now we just want to put some dots all around our canvas, varying them in size and make it look a little bit like snow. So this one's ready to invert and turn into a brush. So I will just tap on invert and I will copy that. And all we need to do now is we're gonna copy our chain brush. We'll duplicate it, go into that, and we'll just leave the spacing as it is now, but we'll go straight to shape and tap on edit and import in our image and tap on done. And the one thing that we will want to change is the rotation. Now let's go down to properties and increase the max size so we can see it in this little drawing pad a little bit more easily. Go just all the way to max on that one and then go over to stroke path and you can change the spacing to however you like. 40% looks pretty good. So let's just go back to shape and then just kind of see how the rotation looks and that one's good there. So let's go to about this brush and change this to snow brush and tap on done. Let me show you a nice way to use this one. So I have this snowy scene that I used in a previous video and I'll show you how I add the snow to it and just add some pretty, pretty snow to our scene here. And we can even add more in the foreground and there we have a really pretty snowy scene with a completely effortless way to create snow for this image. So there we have our five fun brushes all finished up. I hope you like them. And if you followed along and made them for yourself, that is awesome. But if you're just along for the ride, I have made the brushes that I made in this video available to download if you are a member of my Patreon. I've linked to my Patreon down below if you wanna check that out and get those as part of being a member. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button to let me know that you did. And if you wanna watch more content like this one, be sure to subscribe because I love sharing videos like this and I'm gonna keep making them. And I highly suggest watching this next video. It is on the screen, so go ahead and watch that too because it is also a really fun project that YouTube at least thinks you'll like. So thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.